for those for those of you fine and great people who are trying your best to truly understand everything that is significant regarding the Fannie Willis decision. Let me say to you that you cannot watch cable news. You cannot listen to conventional platforms that try to stretch and mold and attract your reaction to it in order to maintain their own existence. What am I saying? What am I saying? They don't get it. Sometimes there were symbological, symbological. I like that, symbological. Well, there's symbology, if you think that's a word. Sometimes there are symbolic things, the semiotics. There are things that mean something. Sometimes they don't. Is there a racial component to this? I don't think it's as much as possible. I don't think it's as much as possible. But let me stop right there when I ask you this. Is there a racial component? Not because the racial component exists, but because they say it exists. What does that mean? You're asking me a lot of questions, aren't you? You keep asking me, well, what does that mean? And I don't blame you because you want to know. You want to understand, right? That's what this is about. Is it racial? Is it racist? Is it black and white? Or do they make it black and white? When does racism exist without you having to comment on it? When is it? I got into a, to a debate today about slavery. Is slavery racist? Depends who the slave is. So therefore, slavery is not racist. Oh my God, people went crazy. We love the word race. Race is our... Oh, don't deny me of the chance to either say it's racist or deny it's racist. Race is not even that significant here. When you eat a piece of rotten cake and you say, what's wrong with it? Is it the sugar? Is it the flour? Is it the staleness? I can taste the staleness. I can taste the sugar. Well, what is it? It's a composite. It's a composite. And your ability as a smart human being is to be able to distinguish what is and isn't relevant. I'm not going to go into Israel and Palestine. You can forget that one. People just don't forget, forget it. Forget that one. That is beyond their understanding. Do you know what this case is? Do you know what this case is? This case is my, is the word that I hate. That's used all the time. I went to a to a a, 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 a pre, a kind of a ceremony recently, and everybody was using the word "amazing." Everything was amazing. These people, these ladies and gentlemen here, are amazing. This this effort of ours is amazing. You look amazing, and I wanted to scream. Does anybody know what the amazing means? What do you say that? It's like the word racist. It's worth so much. Amazing. Do you do what I do? Let's stop and think what this word means. Because, and then ask yourself whether the Fannie Willis case is amazing. Amazing, causing great surprise or wonder. Astonishing. And astonishing, astounding, surprising, bewildering, stunning, staggering, shocking, Startling, stupefying, breathtaking, perplexing, confounding, dismaying, disconcerting, shattering, awesome, awe-inspiring, sensational, remarkable, spectacular, stupendous, phenomenal, prodigious, extraordinary, incredible. Do you understand this? When most people say, I had this sandwich, it was amazing. No, it wasn't amazing. The fact that you're using that word is amazing is amazing. Just like we used to, word, used to use awesome, awesome. No, awesome is when you see God. You're, uh, it, you, you, you are in a sense of awe. But what is happening right now regarding Fannie Willis is amazing and astounding on so many levels that none of the idiots and the nincompoops and the people worried about hair and makeup care about on television. Do you hear what I'm saying? Look at me. Look at me when I'm talking to you. I'm here for you. 
Do I look like I care about hair and makeup? The hell with hair and makeup. Look at me. I look like a baggage handler for Air Morocco. One of my favorite jokes. I have no idea what I mean. I've been saying that since high school. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Oh, my dear friend, you look and you listen to me. You listen to me. Listen to me. So much to tell you. So much to tell you. Now, let's get down to this. This is important because this teaches us something. It teaches us strategy. It teaches us reality. It teaches us a lot. Right? Now, by the way, Senor Stronzo writes, Awesome versus awful. That's an excellent point. Awful. Remember, A-W-E versus A-W. That's interesting. There's no connection between full of all. Awesome, awful. You know what? That is wonderful. Awful. It smells, um, well, nasty, awful, unpleasant. It doesn't. But you're right. The two have no. I never realized it till now. Thank you for that. Thank you. The, there's no A-W-E in that. Or a and w root beer. But I digress. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk number one. Tactic. And don't you love when these people say, Fanny Willis should have stepped down. What kind of a planet are these people living in? Should have stepped down. Let me talk about it like this. Fanny Willis should have stepped down. Are you kidding me? Fanny Willis should have stepped down. Did you hear somebody say that? Somebody actually said this. Why? Because these people, once they sit behind the microphone, once they, the, the hair and makeup goes up, they lose their mind. I want you to understand realism. I want you to understand realism. Okay? Realism. What is realism? Realism is something that's the way it is. I'm going to read something to you since we're on definitions. And by the way, I appreciate the fact that I'm with such a brilliant group of people who appreciate this. Realism. This is one of the most important things uh, in life. And I'm going to read this specifically. Um, well, not realism in art, but realism in uh, uh, international uh, relations. That this, this is like Mearsheimer. And this is really important. Listen to this. And this is this this defines kind of who we are, okay? Realism is a school of uh, thought of international relations, or IR, not infrared, IR. It's a theoretical framework that views world politics, and in this case as well, as an enduring competition among self-interested states vying for power and position. Realism involves the strategic use of military force and alliances to boost global influences while maintaining a balance of power. It doesn't matter what the theories should be. It doesn't matter what's right and what's wrong. It doesn't matter. Have you had a daughter? Have you had that explanation, gentlemen, ladies? Have you ever talked to a girl, maybe your daughter, maybe your granddaughter, about what boys are? Have you ever done that before? You say, now listen, you're 14 years old, you're 15 years old, whatever it is. Once you understand what boys are, okay? And you got to break the news to them. And you got to say, what's going on? And you're looking at this beautiful daughter of yours, this beautiful granddaughter, this beautiful, very, very, just this wonderfully innocent. And you want to say, I got to tell them the truth. I got to tell her the truth. I got to tell her what's going on here. And you can say boys and men in particular are pigs. They are pigs. They're three peckered goats. They have no idea what they're talking about. They are going through your, your hormonal changes are more subtle. Theirs are brutal. Theirs are into, they're, they are rapacious. They're horrible, horrible people. That's what this is. Do you really want to have that? Well, you better have that. You better have that uh, discussion with them. You better have that. But that's the way the world is. And when you talk about people like Fanny Willis, you got to realize she is an opportunist. I have met this broad a million times. Pardon my French. I've met her. I've met her at school boards. I've met her. I've had her with judges, prosecutors, neighbors, people with HOAs, you name it. I've been through clubs. Have you ever been, have you ever been, been a part of a woman's club or been around anywhere near that? Have you ever seen this before? 
You got to understand something. And I'm sorry, people don't talk about this. A lot of times, this isn't about race. It's about gender. It's about gender. And if you don't understand how men and women work, <laughs> you, don't, you don't know anything. These idiots are walking around. Half of these, half of these people are walking around. And I use the word dames and broads and whatever. And I and I do because that's it's a it's it's a term of art. Guy, fella. Well, there's there's no such thing as see, even men don't even have that. Fanny Willis is this opportunistic, self-entitled, arrogant monster who grew up and figures she is the top of the totem. And she might, she, by the way, may have a lot of what you might want to say male characteristics in terms of the, 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 this power, but she is brutal. She is brutality. She is, don't think she's not smart. She's more Machiavellian than smart. But here's the thing, which is interesting. And I've met this a million times. And Tiffany Henyard is the best of the best. And I'm telling you, you're missing. I, I hope you listened to what I said yesterday. Yesterday, I told you, make sure you spend some time going and reading, doing some some uh, some uh, um, uh, viewing, if you will, of Tiffany Henyard. Watch what she says. You won't believe that ex this exists in the real world. There is no one. Fanny Willis, Tiffany Henry, not even, there's nobody, Nancy Pelosi. There is no man, woman, child, animal, uh, molecule, nothing, nothing that even, even comes near Tiffany Henry in terms of absolute uh, audacity. But I digress, dear friends. I digress, okay? Well, listen to me carefully. We've got to explain something. We've got to make sure we understand something. We we have to grasp a couple of things here. This, first and foremost, was a story that happened to be a part of great lawyering on the part of Ashley Merchant. She made this possible. By picking up something, by pursuing something, and then by virtue of there being a God, a very benevolent God, a loving God, God said, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to, I'm going to take your perseverance and I'm going to allow you to enjoy the benefit of your hard work by unveiling, unmasking an absolute lunatic by the name of Fanny Willis. Whatever you thought about her in no wise equals the depravity of this demented, self-entitled, arrogant. There are like man-child. This is like a woman. Child. This is a child who is, she, she throws tantrums. Because if you notice, a lot of the Karens, she's a Karen. She absolutely is a Karen. This entitled, do you know who I am? You can't do that. Take take Fanny Willis, put her on an airplane being thrown off. Do you ever see these videos where somebody's thrown off an airplane? They scream and they yell. They call the cup. They land at Indianapolis. Police come in and they, yay, and all the clan, all the people left. And they turn around and they say, I'm tired of you and F you and yay. And they drag her off. That's Fanny. Remember the woman where the woman who jumps across the the uh, counter of an airport or something or, or whatever it is, that's Fanny. Do you understand the, you ever see the video of the person who's pulled over by a cop and says, excuse me, you have a, your tag. Of the, you don't talk to me. I know my rights. Get the hell. That's Fanny. Fanny is a Karen. Fanny is the product of her uh, world. Now, now, in the real world, people like that don't l live long. Let me explain something to you. The most powerful animals in the world, lions, do not want to engage in people. Do not want to engage. It is not. It is not the province of most animals to engage 
in stuff that could ultimately hurt them. No, 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 no. Very rarely do you see, and where do we see this? Dogs. Dogs are the only ones who will be sitting there. And, and if somebody says, hey, somebody's here, I'm off. They go looking for trouble. Think about this. I love Connie Corsos. I love these, these, these weird these Pyrenees Mastiffs, you know, these dogs, these, they protect the livestock. They're completely different. Animals, a tiger's in. I'm not going over there. Why? I'm, I'm, I'm not hungry. I'm not interested. Yeah, but you're the king of the beast. King of the beast, my ass. I'm not going over there. I'm not going over there. I don't want to go over there. Okay. I'm not going over there. I'm not interested. All right. I'm just saying, no, I'm not saying anything. I'm not going anywhere. But you're the lion. I'm not the lion. I'm not. I'm a lion for a reason. I'm not. But other animals, no, no, they get involved. Fanny looks for trouble. Fanny, and this is where, but Fanny, you're not a Connie Corso. You, you're, 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 you're looking for trouble. And now the world is, is looking at you. You don't understand this. And there's a lot of people, and you are a role model for women and black women and children and girls and people, and you want to run for office, you've got to act. You've got to get rid of this Karen thing. You can't. I'm not. I'm a Karen. It's going to kill you. It's going to destroy you. You can't be like this. This I haven't even gotten. This is the this is the essence of who she is. See, this is this is what you're missing. You got to understand who he she is. I had a friend of mine the other day, a great political operative. We spent one of the best times discussing the personality of Trump. Not whether he's going to win, not who is, but no, no, no. You've got to understand Trump. You've got to understand him. Understand what is this about? How, if you don't understand this, the last time I heard anybody doing this, seriously, was Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, they, they went through his, his personality forever, forever. His growing up, he always felt uh, not worthy. He always felt that uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Kennedys were better than he was and all this kind of jazz. Okay, well, maybe, maybe, but... What's kind of interesting about this, oh, a little bit about Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, remember his father, he used to, pre remember his mother used to walk around with tube tops. She was a real floozy. Remember that one? She, he would spend his time protecting his mother from the drunken father, and he wanted to be loved. Okay, you're missing what's going on if you don't understand Fanny Wilson. I keep saying Wilson Willis. And what I hope that the defense team is doing. By the way, they're the, the Alina Haba. I don't know about you, but every time I see Alina Haba, spend some time. Spend some time. This is this is Trump's. This is Trump's. This is Trump's lawyer. Okay, I'm going to say something right now. I wouldn't be surprised if he's not even paying her. I wouldn't be surprised if he said, "Look, you're going to make some money just being my lawyer." Okay. I, th this is unbeatable. So you might as well do it. I'll tell you what. You be up front. You be up front. You spend this time. I'm going to give you. It's like, uh, no, you do it. I ain't going to pay you. Because I cannot believe. I can't believe that she's sitting there actually saying, I'm going to use this as some kind of a, of a fashion thing. Like, look at me. And I guess that's everywhere. I went to an event the other night where a woman kept taking stuff, and, and every picture of me is like this. I look like a mafia. I look. I just. I said, "Put that goddamn thing down." And she looked at me. I said, "Why are you doing this? You're not. You know, you're eating, and somebody's taking pictures. Like, what are you doing?" Well, anyway, that's Alina Haba, Ashley Merton. Different story. Different story. Look at the way they're doing this. They are just. And for them, I hope they've known this. They have to understand. That whenever you phrase anything, I want you to bait her and be a master baiter. We all we all have to be a master bait. You know, life is about baiting people. You gotta bait the enemy. You must be a master baiter. And it's okay. I know what you might think about that. That's cruel, whatever. No. Be good at it. 
really be a, a master or a mistress at baiting. And whenever you do anything, whenever you say, for example, well, the uh, the state was, see, no, no, the district attorney cannot do this. Phrase it in a way that the district attorney erred, not erred, erred. The district attorney made a mistake. The district attorney exceeded her profile, her, her authority. The district attorney did this. She'll go berserk because she's not going to be in the courtroom. But she's going to hear about this. Always make it personal. Phrase everything as her. That's how you bait her. You want her off balance. She's not a professional. She doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's never done it before. She's not a politician. She's everything. She's just, she doesn't know what she's doing. She's no Tiffany Henyard, but then again, nobody else is. She's just, she might be of AOC kind of, but AOC is smart enough. Fanny also has no authority. She has no direction. Nobody's telling her, all right, watch this. Because, listen carefully, the Repub the Democrats have cut her loose. They have no interest in her whatsoever. She's not going anywhere. She's not going anywhere. You know it and I know it. She's not going to be anybody. She's not going to be the the um, leader. Of no, 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 no. She doesn't have it. She doesn't have it. Does not have it. Say what you want about anybody in power. Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris. Go down the list. Go down the list. AOC. This one? Mm -mm. No, no, no. She can't do it. Now, who benefits? Trump. On this scale from 1 to 10, whatever that means, number one, the best thing he could have hoped for is to die in your sleep. I think we learned that from the gambler. I think Kenny Rogers taught us that. Now, the best thing, obviously, is case is dismissed with prejudice, meaning he can't refile. That ain't going to happen. That would have been the best. That ain't going to happen. But it, that ain't going to happen. Okay. You sure? I'm sure. That ain't going to happen. All right. What next? Second thing would be if it were DQ'd and the new case went, there's 159 counties in Georgia as far away as possible so that you can say, well, okay, Gwinnett County or whatever the hell, I don't know where it is. You're the prosecutor. You've got it because there is a, there is a clearinghouse, kind of a state prosecutor's commission or something where they send this. And you can't turn it down. You can't say, hey, this is bullshit. Get rid of this. Oh, no, 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 no. You got it. I don't want this. You got it. But I didn't file this case. Didn't, didn't dump it. I'm not going to dump it. It's yours. And if you're from Gwinnett County or wherever the hell, by the way, Button Gwinnett, one of the rarest autographs of all time. Remember that from, I remember that from the uh, Guinness Book of World Records. Button Gwinnett from Button. Not a great name. Anyway. So, he can keep the case, he or she, the prosecutor, dump the case, that ain't going to happen, pare the case down, stall it, kill it, and it's going to be stalled forever. Your Honor, Your Honor we need a, we need a this, uh, uh, judge, whoever, let's say that the judge, whoever has this in this new county, we need at least uh, a year continuous. What? Listen, we got to, first of all, we don't live here. We got to travel. The new prosecutors have to do this case. Okay. And this thing just gets, oh, and the longer, remember, the longer the case is stretched out, the better it is for the defendant. That's what they're going to do with Hunter Biden. Goodbye. Hey, Hunter. Hey, what happened? Did you ever wonder about Hunter Biden? Because that's what you'll do. One day you'll say, wait a minute, Hunter Biden, what happened? Son of a, they just, they just forgot it, didn't they? They just forgot it. That's exactly what they're going to do. That's exactly what they're going to do. So that's the second. You want it to just, just extend it. And motions. You know, we've got to do this. I mean, I... and then the new prosecutor says, okay, what is this case? What is this? Who did this? Well, that was a special grand jury. What the hell is a special grand jury? Well, that's Fannie Willison. What? This is dark. We got to go read to the transcript. They charge what with this? Racketeering? Oh no, this is a dog. You've got it. 
Well, then dismiss it. I can't dismiss it. What? Against Trump? What are you, nuts? Let's say he's a Democratic county. I can't do I got to guess. Well, you don't want him acquitted. Well, I don't want to dismiss it. They'll think the fix is in. What do we do? Stall it. Have him plead to something. He ain't going to plead to anything. Trump's not going to plead to anything. He's not that Sidney Powell. Remember that big nothing? Remember Sidney Powell? Remember that? I won't release the Kraken. What the hell? Were, what was that? And you forget this Jenna Ellis. Remember her? She was always near her. Remember um, uh, Joe DeGeneva? Remember him? And um, what was his wife's name? Joe DeGeneva and Victoria. Victoria Tenzing. Remember them? They were part of this and they were standing. They, Joe DeGeneva's legit. And just Jenna Ellis were. Push her way. I'm like, here I am. I'm in charge. God. She was like the Connie Corso. This is my territory. Well, then, once she was charged with this, she says, you know what? I don't like it. She turned her back on Trump. She started crying. She wants to be, you know, the political, the conservative type. Anyway, she pled. Victoria, I mean, uh, uh, Sidney Powell, and, and, and somebody else said too, some, I don't know, some bail bondsman. Or something. I mean, listen, if you stayed in it, <laughs> this thing's going nowhere. That would be the best for Trump. So what's going to happen with that? Who knows? All I know is it's staying there. And she's got it. And everybody is the happiest. So believe it or not, believe it or not, McAfee actually was as as Jonathan Turley says, Solomon-esque versus Solomon-esque. They split that baby. Well, we can get rid the best, the best is let's get rid of, of Nathan Wade. What? That'll solve everything. That'll solve everything? Wait a minute. What? Yeah, Nathan Wade. What? That's like firing. Fire Terrence Bradley. But he's not a pro fire him. Okay. By the way, that guy has got up. He has so many red dots on him. They are after him. I hope. I hope to God he's got. You know, twenty four seven protection because they what what he did. He he turned against everybody. I mean, this guy, even Sammy the Bull said, "Whoa, whoa, this guy's not a rat. He's like a." A pack, a pack rat. He's a pack o rat. This guy, he flipped on everybody with a zeal and flipped on the people he flipped on. Met with Ashley Merchant, flipped on her, changed his mind. He ended up without a country, out a friend, without anything. He was the worst. I don't know what his fate is. That's the guy. Oh, my God. He is. I don't know who would play him in the movie. I swear to God. Because I think Monique should play Fanny. Because you got to get that strong, obstreperous. Uh, Nathan. I don't know. We need somebody who's. Who's. Uh. Somebody, he looks very, he looks kind of like Shannon Sharp, but he, I, I, I think he's far more articulate than Mr. Sharp. But who replaced Terrence? Remember the guy who played Rerun years ago? <laughs> What's happened? What was the movie with Roz? Remember that movie? I love that with Raj. What's happening? I love Shirley Hemphill. I love that show. Anyway, I'm always, I'm always casting, casting movies. Who would play you? Who would play me in Lionel Nation? Who would play me? It's nobody. Emmanuel Lewis, TV's Webster, I think. That's my idea. Who would, who, casting is important. I mean, this, this would mean this, because I, because I, I don't exist. I am, I am this, I do not exist on the human phylogenetic tree anywhere. Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh my God. Wanda Sykes, you know what? Fanny, you're right about that. Excellent. Interesting. 
She needs work. She's also, Wanda Sykes, also ratted out, turned her back on Roseanne. Not a big fan of you. Mandy Patinkin could pay you. You know what? That's that's um, interesting enough. People say, what? No, not really. Larry David. <laughs> Denzel Washington as Lionel. You know what I could think? I would JB Smooth, he would be terrific. Denzel as me. And I'd say, what? What's the matter? And nobody could say, well, you're not, I'm not what? He's not what? What are you getting at? What are you getting at? Um, you know, uh in any event. Henry Mancini knocked it out of the park with his theme from what's happening. Henry Mancini? I don't know if I'm falling for this or not. Ron Jeremy. All right, that's enough. Now, what happens next? Well, here's what happens next. The next is Trump says we're doing great. We are doing fantastic. Now, here's the next one. You ready for this? Now, remember one thing. There is a P word. It rhymes with wussy. I, I say this in public. I don't like to sully this. There's some words I think that are necessary. But the Republicans are wussies. They are absolutely, they are absolutely, um, I don't know what the word is. I was at this thing the other night. It's an event. This guy comes up to me and he says, Hi, I'm with the Republican Party. I said, Oh, that's good. I don't want to. He goes, Did you sign this? I said, I'm not signing anything. No, 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 sign. This is a this is a day to get somebody on the ballot. I said, I don't know who you are. I don't know what this is. I'm not going to read this. I don't sign things. No, no, trust me. This is the way it's excuse me. I don't know what this is. I don't sign things. You can't give me something on a clipboard and say sign it. But I did appreciate at least it was a Republican ostensibly doing something. I said, I'm not a Republican, number one, number two. But second of all, you, you, you please, please be careful when you're like at a store and there's somebody, would you sign this? It's like, what is this? What am I signing? What? Where is your name? Go? Who are these people? Are you, is this some weird, strange Illuminati hit list? Huh? Is it? I don't know. And I've got to say something, my friends. Just so. Today is St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York City. And St. Patrick's is one of the worst days ever. Because you have all of these half-assed, the most insulting, the most insulting behavior towards the people that I love, the Irish. Best bartenders, best, best people. I mean, if you want to see something interesting, look at what happened with the Troubles, and look at what happened with in, in Israel and Palestine. I mean, this is this is basically about land. And what they do all the time is they always take any any Irish people here, and they always make it sound like you're some leprechaun. We're so happy to have our friend today from Ireland. Come here, say something to us in your funny accent. Listen to this. Irish, this is this is Irish Spring. This is Lucky Charms. Listen to him. It's so funny, so cute. Come here, talk to us. Listen to this. He does that Irish thing. And so with your brogue, you know what a friend of mine told me one year, I think it's called a burr is uh, they call it uh, for Scottish, but a brogue, my friend told me one time, he looked at me and he says, of course I didn't understand. He goes, this one, there, fuck things up on there. It's not brogue about that. Okay. I don't know what you're saying, but apparently I've, I've, I've said something to incur your wrath. A brogue means a shoe. And, uh, Somebody said the Irish speak like they have a shoe in their mouth or something. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a term of disrespect. And let me also tell you something. They don't have an accent. You have an accent. Can you imagine being someplace and you're some, some restaurant or some, you're, you're in Ireland and you know, you're just, a, you're, this is American. And they go up and they say, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, we have a man right here. Your man from, uh, where are you from? Cincinnati. Listen to him with that American voice. Come here, Jerry. Could you come up here? You're gonna love this. Listen to the way the, your man talks with that American accent. The weird way of pronunciation. Come on, Jerry. Come up. Say a few words. Talk to us. 
and and do that cute little American accent you do. You'll love this. He sounds like a fool. The way he says his words like uh, he can't pronounce his T's like you'll see Martin in uh, Manhattan. And they can't say words because they're stupid Americans. They're stupid. Listen to me. So come on, Jerry. Come on. Come on. Please come up. Say something to the folks. Will you? Will you do? And 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 do. Can can you do a the Dukes of Hazard? Well, that's Southern. What's the difference? Isn't that an American accent? Was there a difference between a Southern and a New York accent? But it's all the same to us. Just we have a commercial. We had a. We have. What do we have in this country? Lucky Charms, right? It's always hey yo de ho de shiver me It's always pirates. Uh, Remember, manly, yes, but I like it too. Irish Spring. Oh, hello, Father. How are you? How about a potato? I hate that. And this time we have, let's have our shepherd's pie and our corned beef and cabbage and our green beer. And we'll do the hello, holy, holy, and the leprechauns. And oh, we'll have fun. And we'll have Aaron Gobralis. And oh, and the Irish don't know what you're talking. They don't even have St. Patrick's Day Parade. That's an American thing. These are the best people in the world. They are the greatest. And I never, I might just acknowledge, I'd love to say, what part of Alabama are you from? Dothan? Or I, I'm, I'm here in this, uh, Montgomery. I'm, and, and, and that's about it. Just to acknowledge, but don't ever talk. Because you have an accent. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something. You have an accent. If you go to Ireland, you have an accent. Accents are relative. Somebody said like incest. It's a terrible joke. But the point is, and who cares about ants? That's an old joke. But the thing is, is that that's, that's, that's the American hubris. That's who we are. Oh, no, we're, we speak English, not you. We speak English. We do it. We, we, it's, it's this. Can you imagine if they did this like Martin Luther King's Day? We have now a nice, your man, he's a black fellow from America. Could you come up here and do your black voice for us? Oh, today we have Columbus Day. When we, when we talk about the Italians, could you come up here? We have a Giovanni. Giovanni, could you come up here and do that weird kind of a that, that accent? Can we talk about the Godfather or the Mafia? Could you come up here? We've got some spaghetti and we're going to, uh, we're going to pretend to have a fake shootout. And we're going to, um, I mean, it's just, it's like so, it's like so degraded. You know, the, the leprechauns, this is like, this is the St. Patrick. St. Patrick, what a story that one is. How about that one? Imagine this. God says, all right, Patrick. Well, why, why is God saying, Patrick, yeah, God. Listen, I want you to, we're going to make you the Patriot State of Ireland. What? Why? I'm not Irish. Well, you are now. No, but I'm not. I, 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 no, no. I was, I'm, I'm Welsh. Doesn't matter. No, it does matter. What if they made you the, the patron saint of Borneo or the patron saint of, uh, of Norway? But I'm not Norwegian because God was funny about that. He would pick you up. He gives a like Saint Jude, the patron saint of the impossible. What the hell does that mean? So anyway, so here's your story, uh, Patty, and this P A D D Y. Because Patty also, Patty is a Patty wagon, you know, there's, 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 there's a pejorative there. Okay. You, 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 uh, you, you scared the snakes off of, 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 of uh, the island. What? You scared the snakes off of, of, of Ireland. What kind of a story is that? That's yours. That's stupid. Doesn't matter. You're it. That's Catholic for you. And that's what it is. But then again, there were Protestants in Catholic too. Go to Ulster. See what they think about it. Nobody knows anything about it. Nobody knows. This is typical American. It's insulting. And the Irish just get abused. Ooh, they, there's always... Remember remember Caddyshack? Remember the, remember the woman who played Danny, Danny's girlfriend? A faith in Begora. I tell you what, Danny Parsons, if you go there and you talk to your man there playing the golf, for God's sakes, who did this? This is, I, 
I, I, I, I mean, I, I, nobody cares about them. But as I, I do, that we just abuse them in this country. We just treat them like children. It's this stupid thing. Oh, do you like your, I got your green beads. What? If you went to Ireland and they treated Americans, oh, Mr. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Oh, what have we got here? How about a nice hot dog? Would you like a hot dog? We've got that for you. Don't you, don't you love, you're, you're from America, right? Who have, we have crack. You're into the crack cocaine and hot dogs. And we all put on patter because you're all obese and you have no culture. Anyway, enough of that. I get offended <laughs> by the wrong stuff. And people say, are you Irish? Okay. Let me also say something. Let me just say something while we're at it. First of all, I have Irish blood. Who doesn't? I've never been to Ireland. I've got names and people you would say, geez, you're Killarney, you know. I have no connection with this. I am not, I'm an American. I am an American. So this is, are you Irish? No, I'm American. Well, you it doesn't matter. And when people say, um, I tell you, hey, 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 what, hey Jerry, uh, Dermot, yeah, listen, I'm Irish. Sure. My name, my, O'Flynn, O'Shaughnessy. Yeah, I'm, I'm Irish. Have you been to Ireland? No. Can you speak Irish? You know, Gaelic? No. Oh, my name's O'Shaughnessy. My grandfather was from uh, Cork. I'm Irish. You're Irish? Yeah, I'm Irish. Imagine that. I'll tell you what there, Edie Crowley. I'm American. What? My grandfather was from St. Louis. His name was um, uh, whatever. Martin. His name was Martin. From have, have you been to the U.S.? No. Couldn't find it on the map, but I'm American. But we think we are with this. Edie Crowley says, in regards to casting, movie called Echoes of Darkness, Upper Marion High School, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, where I went for a while. The actor is spot on. Wow. You mean for me or just? Well, let's, who this, let's see who this is. Echoes of Darkness. That would, that would be a great movie. The Lionel story. Echoes of Darkness. I'm a dark man. Every day I talk to these poor waifs on my Lionel Nation show. These poor bastards sit around all day, daft to the Mickey, daft as a brush. Dear God. Echoes of Darkness. Oh, Echoes in the Darkness? Wait a what did you say just a minute? Echoes of Darkness. Are you sure? Maybe it's... Okay. I'm afraid to, to look at this. But thank you for that. I appreciate it immensely. Uh, here we go. Sparky says, had a pair of new old stock ankle high early 20th century work shoes from granddad's general store when I was a kid called them the brogans yes the the brogue uh is the um the actual that really thick if you look at like shoe like remember wing tips well these are military wing tips these are things with the holes in them and the, and the whole thing listen i i I really respond. I really love your uh <laughs> Lionel, you can pick up more viewers with the accent. I'm not gonna do this the whole time. First of all, I say it out of love. I'm not imitating it, but you can but but I I remember one time we had this the the the, the best accent, whatever, and I can go right now, I can go to any of the we're missing it in New York. The Irish pub, the Irish joint, they, they were this, there was this group of uh, Jimmy Neary and Jerry Toner and all these people who were famous. They came in the in the 60s. They were on ships and they whatever. And they opened up bars and they just did so well for themselves. And, the, and that, that group of people, they're all dying off. But of the ones who were still here, I could do an imitation and walk up and say, I'll just make one sound and they'll know who it is. Guaranteed. To this day. And all I've got to do is say, this one there. Oh, they know who it is. This was the best voice ever from Galway. No, Nobody knew what. Nobody understood. This one there. 
I like to do. And now with his guest appearance on on um, on St. Patrick's Day on Fox News, uh, I like to on, on Fox and Friends. We have our friend uh, Dermot Killarney from Galway, or from uh, Bunkrana, or wherever I'm from, to to give his opinion about the Fanny Willis case. Let's see. Thank you. This one, your one, uh, Fanny Willis, was uh, your uh, one. Uh, she's too stupid. Stupid one there, your man. Uh, the weird, Mr. Weird, or uh, Nathan Weird. And your man there took um, the, the door stop, the, no, the, the, the garage door. The sister one, this one there, she's your old man, Floyd. She said, Your man, this is, she's a mother, pay cash for nothing. What if they don't go on the, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, flight, or go on the, uh, the cruise? I tell one, tell your man, you want to nap there. It's not about telling you, I'll go there for you, but I want to pay you cash. I don't have a credit card. I don't have a cash in my home. So I came to your man there. I said, listen, wait, come here. How much did you pay for the one? The, the, the hotel, the hotel, the boat, the cruise. Here's five, ten, ten fifteen thousand. Right there. That's fifteen large for your man. I don't take cash. My father's one. Your man there, a whole man there, father. He, he was a place one day and there. So American Express. He goes, No, you're black. He goes, What? Get out of here. What you <laughs> and then what there is ten dollars. And what they put in the American Express. And what the hell are you going for? the fuck sake? Daft the brush. So your man came there and I said, Oh, it's fine, next thing you know. So I came and there, uh, your man Trump. Your man Trump's a great bastard. You know that? He's a crazy bastard. You know what? You got the one there because the one you're going to win. Right? <laughs> That's exactly what I would do. All right. Now, my friends, let me just say this. The next one's going to be following of this right and i'm still going to do more of the breakdowns because the story as i told you before the most important story is terrence 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 and also change the story tiffany henyard now another thing too which i'm making a big deal about which nobody cares why are they forcing tiktok to be sold quick questions ladies and gentlemen do you believe do you believe that the government of the United States should force, should say, you can't bring TikTok in this country and force them to sell. Your man Sparky. Sparky says, when American blacks went abroad in the 80s to countries where they were rarely seen, people annoyed them by asking them to break dance. Well, well, I get that request a lot too. And I, I believe me, I, I, I find it most annoying. Now, do you believe... Do you believe, seriously, that I, I know nobody cares about this. Who are we to tell somebody TikTok can't come here because, wait a minute, because they do what? Because of the information? You don't give a damn about this. You're playing proxy for Zuckerberg and Google and others as well. If they're American, that's okay, right? Since when do you care about money, about information and data being come? Come on. Are you kidding me? I, I and did you hear that the Nancy Pelosi tic tac toe? What? What is that even about? Ladies and gentlemen, we are losing our First Amendment right to speak. I know you've heard this before. I know you've heard this. They are coming at us left and right. They are coming at us left and right. Did you hear the one about Aaron Rodgers had to explain his Sandy Hook beliefs? Did you hear this one? RFK Jr.'s vice president prospect, Aaron Rodgers, which is stupid, has shared false Sandy Hook conspiracy. Okay, he responds to it. Did you hear this? Did you hear this one? He has to respond to it. New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers responded to reports that he floated conspiracy theories surrounding the 2012 Sandy Hook shooting, asserting he has never denied the event happened. Uh, CNN reported that Rodgers has shared conspiracy theories in private conversations, in private conversations in Newtown, Connecticut, excuse me. Uh, in a Thursday post on X, formerly known as Twitter, Rodgers called what happened at Sandy Hook a tragedy. I am not and have never been in the opinion that the events did not take place. 
Again, I hope that we learn from this and other tragedies to identify the signs that will allow us to prevent unnecessary loss of life. Now, I'm going to say something to you. And this is the part that's amazing. I have a friend of mine, a good man. He might be watching now. I don't know. But he believes, like he, like he has hands, that we never landed on the moon. Look at this. Dr. J. Smith, principal and possible serial killer. Okay. I don't know what that means. But I'll look into that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm into this. But thank you for that. Let's look what this means. I don't know what this means, but we'll see. Uh, is this... Uh, I don't know who this is. Um, I don't know. I don't know who these people are. But but interesting. Just give me a little bit more information. But let me go back to what I was saying. But thank you for that. Um, as I was saying, I have a friend of mine who believes that we never landed on the moon. There isn't a week that goes by where he says, let me send you another video. Look at this. Look at the steps. There's no dust. How can you have this? There's no stars. How come this? Here's the suit. These are people from NASA. People, there's a there is a group of people that used to work at NASA. You can't, if you wore the suit, the Van Allen belt, the radiation would kill you. Look at how thin this suit is. Look at it. Here's the suit. Do you can you believe it? All right, fine. I I should he be able, should he be able to think this? Should he be able to float? That conspiracy theory, yes, float away, float on, float. Cancer, and my name is Larry. Float on, float on. I like women of the world. Float on. Love the float on by the floaters. Interesting. Should you be able to think that? Yes. Say it. Say it. Why? Why not? It's your opinion. I don't care. Well, you know, he was saying some things about COVID. Say it. What is this? Well, there are people who are, you know, there, there are people who won't believe in, uh, in San Diego. If you don't believe that, if you don't believe it, say it. I don't agree. It, wh wh why can you not say something? If, however, you do something in which you say, for example, I don't think, well, let me give you an example. People who said the Gulf of Tonkin was really the false flag that got us involved in, in Vietnam. It was the Gulf of Tonkin. And the Gulf of Tonkin was it. And the Gulf of Tonkin. Okay. Is that okay to say that? Yeah. Well, that's it. Was that a conspiracy? Theory? Well, it turns out to be true. Now, the only difference is that when you tell somebody this never happened, this never happened, and when you do something where you basically unleash people to attack individuals, when you're basically almost like an incitement, that's a different story. That's a different story. If I were to say, when people used to say, remember, who was it? Uh, uh, Neil Armstrong, you never landed on the moon and you're a liar. Can Neil Armstrong sue for libel? Yes. Why? Because you called me a liar. You called me a liar. So you put me, it's, this, this is an act against me. Not the issue of landing. No, but there is no, there is no court case of landing on the moon. We don't go to court. Do we? No, you call me a liar. Of course, during the course of this, uh, uh, truth is a defense and you, you know, whatever. Okay, fine. Do you see what they're doing though? You've got to explain. Did you ever think that? And if Aaron Rodgers said, and he apparently did not think that, but what are they going to do next? Did you ever think that John Kennedy was killed by the CIA? Are you floating that? He's one of those conspiracy theorists who thinks that the government was responsible. You know, Bobby Kennedy believes that Sirhan Sirhan was not the either the lone or the shooter. Is he floating that one? You know, a lot of people think that the, the, uh, they're, they're floating this idea 
that the United States turned away Jews on the St. Louis, causing them. Wait a minute, that happened, and and you're you're and you're and you're, and you're floating anti-Semitic tripe. They're going to get you on that one next. Did you go on this show? Were you on the gray zone? Yes. You're an anti-Semite. Did you do you disavow? We're going to do that next. We're going to do that, and it just keeps going, keeps going. Did you ever say? Did you ever? Did you ever promote the ivermectin story? Did you promote the the hydroxychloroquine? Did you float that? Yeah. You want to clarify that? Clarify that. Yeah. Excuse me. Who are you? I'm CNN. Now we're going to give you a chance to to disavow. I'm not going to disavow that. Oh, you're not disavowing conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy theory. You call it. Well, we call it a. Conspiracy. You see where this goes? You see where this goes? But yet, they'll never say things like, they'll never go after things like um, Farrakhan. Did you say this about white people or Jews or whatever? He gets a pass. Now, let me say something to you. That's right. You know what I'm going for? This. This protects your speech. I was watching a show the other day. Fellow's name is Don Shipley, one of my favorite. One of my favorite is called uh, Underwater. Well, he's a former Navy SEAL, <clears throat> and he busts a medal of a medal of, of stolen uh, valor. People, I love that with his wife Diane. I just love that. Love him, and he goes, "Hey, bud, hey, shipmate, it's Don Shipley. If you ever get a call and somebody says, "Hey, it's Don Shipley," hang up." It's not good. When Don Shipley calls you, it's not good. Hey, how you doing? I never said I was in the name. I never said you did. Okay, thank God. Sparky says, U.S. government hates TikTok's influence over American youth. They have CAA people filtering TikTok, but they're overwhelmed by pro-Palestinian content, so they're taking it away with a government proxy company. Well, not only that, they're not only that, they also don't like, and you're right, and thank you, Sparky, they don't like the fact that, let me just stop for one second. We'll get to you in a moment. Don Shipley the other day said, he said, you know, conspiracy theories, he goes, I don't mind them. They keep the government in check. Absolutely. And it's not a conspiracy theory. Now, Sparky. Sparky, you know something. Rule number one. When the American government <clears throat> or its proxies, social media proxies, this is so brilliant. So brilliant. When they say you can't say something, it's because it's true. If I met with uh, Jefferson Madison, and I said, let me tell you what they're going to do one day. I'm from the future. You know how you printed this? Yeah. You know how you printed the Constitution? Yeah. Yeah. The king has, has put a word out. They own all the paper. They own the paper. If you want paper to buy, to print your constitution on, or paper for your pamphlets, you know, common, you know, Thomas Paine and uh, my favorite, Tench Cox and others as well, the Brits have control over the people who sell the paper, their proxies. So when you say, hey, I'm Tommy Jefferson here, I'm Madison, we want to put, they'll say, who are you? I'm sorry, we're not going to, we're not going to sell this paper to you. Why? Because you're printing lies and you're subversive. They say, goddamn right we're subversive. I'm, 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 no. And I would tell Madison what they would do is the king would have agents by basically Hiring, owning, controlling the people that make the stuff that you need to promote the idea. So whereas they had parchment and paper and this and that, today we have social media. So social media is basically controlled by the shadow government through its proxies, through the government. They say in China, in China, you can't use, in China, TikTok is only for, how, how long can you watch TikTok in China? Mrs. L knows all. 40 minutes a day. And it shuts down. And they talk about things like math and science. They don't let their kids watch that. 
But you know what? So what? What does that mean? What does that mean? Now, either you're a First Amendment absolutist or you're not. I don't want to get into the content business. I don't want to get into the content. That's not what I'm interested in. I don't care about that. When you have CSAM, child sexual abuse material, on platforms to this day, when you have dark web stuff here and nobody cares about that, don't give me this nonsense about how all of a sudden, oh, you worry about TikTok. You know what it is. Zuckerberg's got it. He, he He's terrific. He'll say, okay, look, I'll let you kick my ass in front of people, but understand you support me, all right? And TikTok is my bite dance and all this. And by the way, would we be better off without TikTok? It's not for me to decide. I know an evangelical preacher who loves TikTok. I've got a friend of mine who's 70 some years old. He loves TikTok. It's mindless. Not all of it's bad, but every time you allow something to occur, whether it's paper, a book, a movie, somebody somewhere is going to contaminate it. Edie says, echoes in the darkness, correct. Oh, Peter Coyote, yes. Peter Coyote, by the way, was always that great uh, narrator. He was really wonderful with that. Now, I got news for you, my friends. I got news for you. We are under this, we are under attack. We are under attack like you cannot believe. I was watching something the other day which was so, it was an, it was an, Lex Friedman had a, a debate between, a debate between, um, oh, I forget this one guy's name, Finkelstein, Destiny, and um, Benny Morris, or, and Destiny figures, who's very smart, but I'm going to speak faster than anybody else. And I'm going to take what I say and speed it up and create this illusion. And what I'm saying is brilliant. And by the way, if you took a transcript of what he said, you would say, oh, okay. Anyway, they're arguing. They're arguing. And I know Sparky will like this. They're arguing about, well, the 1948, was it the Nakba? Was it, well, what happened before that? Well, the, the Jews, uh, the, actually the, the Zionists, well, purchased a lot of the property. And I'm saying, excuse me. Thank you very much. This is, this is brilliant. And thank you, Lex Friedman. I appreciate this. But as we speak, people are dying now. And your idea of dealing with what amounts to either genocide under Article 2 because it's the targeted death, injury, or supplanting of, a, of an, eth of an uh, ethnical, they call it, ethnic religion, whatever, in whole or in part. This is, this is the current definition of genocide being used by the world courts and the like. This is the most important thing. This is critical. People are dying, and you're arguing about this? About, about history? About history? Can you imagine going in and saying, uh, during Vietnam, veterans trying to tell Americans, we're going to bring you back, but we're not doing too well. Why? Well, we're arguing the history of Vietnam and the succession. Was it the French and the, and the role of, the, of Japan versus the French? And yet, what? Well, we're we're uh, listen. Sorry, Black America. Yeah, we're trying to we're, we're trying to end slavery, but we're stuck on the part of whether the role of provincial African leadership in basically uh, consenting to what we're talking, we're arguing about the history from all of these these their people die. Who gives a shit about this? We'll get to that later. Stop this. Stop killing people. Stop it. This is not brilliant on my part. This is not a conspiracy theory. Stop this. Stop it. Have you seen these kids? I mean, stop both sides. Not just one, both sides. Have you seen what happens when you pull kids out of rubble? Have you seen this? It's horrible. They're gray. They've got that stare. They're like dolls. Just like, what is going on here? We're arguing with this? 
You've got this destiny who sits there and he's reading from Wikipedia about saying, what is going on here? I don't get it. Gold. Okay, thank you for that. And don't get me started. Okay. And don't get me started about Haiti. Don't get me started with that. I'm going to say something else to you, my friends. I'm not into memes. I'm not into memes. And you know where the word meme comes from? Do you know this? Do you know what a meme is? Meme is a memetic. And it's from Richard Dawson. Not Richard Dawson. He was on the, the um, Family Feud. Richard Dawkins. Also, he uh, was... He was um, he was on Hogan's Heroes. And he, Dawkins came as this idea of the meme, memetic, something that is an idea, an origin, an idea of a thought that is passed on from person to person. Okay, fine. And it goes like this. I want to tell you this one meme. I'm going to try to explain this to you because this is so important. This should be mandatory. And there's three panels. And the first one has a guy wearing a mask under his nose, which is so funny. He's wearing a mask under his nose. And we see this all the time. Oh, no, no. And the first panel reads, whoever thinks the government can be overthrown with a militia doesn't know how tanks and jet fighters work. You've heard this before. Remember that? Remember this? Second Amendment is saying, don't, oh, 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 you think you're going to stop what? The 82nd Airborne? You think you're going to stop the 1st Marine Division? You think you're going to stop SEAL Team 6? With what, you and your Glock? Don't you understand something? You know how tanks and fighters, who was it? Was it Schumer who said this? Somebody's, anyway. So whoever thinks the government can be overthrown with the militia doesn't know how tanks and jet fighters work. That's panel one. Panel two, the response says, but you claim the government was almost overthrown on January 6th by unarmed people merely walking into a building. Third panel, frown, uh, frustration, whatever it is. That is exactly right. And this country has been, you've been told, you've been told this nonsense over and over by this January 6th stuff. By the way, January 6th was stupid. I would have gotten no, but it was not in any way an insurrection or anything close to that. You know that and I know that. Now listen, where do we speak? Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? AOC won't step. Well, well listen, this isn't about Palestinians. This isn't about Gaza. It's about human beings. I don't care if you're in Haiti. I don't care where it is. Stop killing. Hey, Jesus, can you can you help me with this one? Stop killing. You just had this big part, this big uh, movie, this fake, phony biopic, my ass, about Oppenheimer. It was a joke because he was a commie, which was okay. But don't give me this business about whatever it is. He, this is all nonsense. They know exactly what's going on. And they wanted to kill people real good. And then later on, he says, okay, the atom bomb, but not the hydrogen bomb. Okay. Okay, I'll, t I'll invent the weapon, Frederick Remington, but not the machine gun. Okay. It's ridiculous. We just make up stuff. We're missing the point. I am a human being. I am, I am a part of no religious organization. As a human being with no desire other than the fact that I don't want to kill innocent people for any claim you've got, whether it's geography, history, land, Bible, uh, songs, tradition, mythology, nothing. I don't want to kill people. During the troubles in Ireland, stop killing people. Yeah, but you're, you know, and they say, but you, we're being occupied by, you know, we've been through that before. This is a war, war. Who's really behind it? What do you really want? What is it really about? It's very rare when you have something that's really, truly just about land. Something else. Minerals, gold. Look at Afghanistan. Afghanistan happens to be the Saudi Arabia of lithium. Who speaks for us? Where's my party? Stop this. AOC, no guts. Bernie Sanders, no guts. Where's the left? Rashida Tlaib, these people, they told him to shut up. Let me also tell you we got a problem. Rashida Tlaib, Elon Omar, and well, used to be, whatever. When they say stop, I'll go so far as to say, I agree with you. I'll join you and stop the killing. Your other views, 
So I can compartmentalize my idea. Stop the killing. Stop. Americans are always involved in something that doesn't make any the, the Iraq war was a joke. Afghanistan was a joke. This is, this is a joke. Come on, stop it. Libya, what we did to Libya, what we did to Gaddafi. It was a joke. It was manufactured. Sparky says, history is pertinent in that it's used to convince U.S. government to stop supplying Israel militarily and economically. Gaza conflict would stop quickly. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, our own friend, Ronald Reagan, found this out. Who was it, Begin? Remember the story? Where he picked up the phone and he said, you better cut this out, whatever it was. And 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 they did. And, and Reagan supposedly said something to the effect of, wow, I didn't know I was that powerful or something like that. I was at a meeting the other day. Well, I shouldn't say a meeting. It's never a meeting. With these people. And once you put on a lapel pin, something happens. The part of your brain, the frontal part of the brain, the cortex, the frontal part of the brain, the cortex, loses all functioning, loses all functioning when you wear a lapel pin. Something happens. And if there's an American lapel pin, forget it, it's gone. And if you see an Israeli flag, an American flag, or you see Ukraine and whatever it is, you know this person knows nothing. And the bigger, the bigger the uh the the bigger the lapel pin, the less they know. That's the one. Um hang on a minute. The one that got me the most was this. Uh do you remember a while back? Do you remember when Sean Hannity was wearing a CIA lapel pin? Do you remember this? Do you remember this? I don't know. It's been a long time. He may not do it anymore. I have no idea. A CIA lapel pin. CIA. Would you wear a CIA lapel pin? Do you know what the CIA has done? Do you, do you have any idea? Do you have any idea of 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 wh what what that means? Do you have any idea, the CIA, of what we've done from? Just go back to Iran. I mean, just but but this is somebody who said, "Oh, I think it's cool." Now the next time I was trying to tell somebody, somebody was talking the other day about about Putin. He said, "Well, you know, Putin was KGB, FSB." I said, "KGB, FSB is considered cool, just like CIA." The same reason Sean Hannity wears a pin, their their KGB whatever is the CIA. You have to put things in their position. Now let me tell you what happens. If you are with a group of people, and remember what Cass Sunstein said, cognitive infiltration. Cass Sunstein is uh, Samantha Power's husband. When you start talking to people. And you start like I do, and you say, <laughs> Biden's no Reagan. You are correct. Biden is not anything at this particular point, which is all Sicilian flu, by the way. He's not as gassed as you think. Believe me. Believe me. In any event. Do you know what Godwin's law is? Do you know what Godwin's law is? Anybody know this? Godwin's law was from the 70s. This was somebody who said that whenever, whenever, whenever anybody has any kind of a debate, Online, uh, uh, the the longer it is discussed, the greater the the probability that Hitler will be counted or will, will be referenced will approach one. Meaning, somebody along the way will say Hitler, Nazis, something. Hitler will be mentioned. Well, as I say, Hitler, as I say, the fascists, Hitler, Hitler becomes a part of this. Okay, a version of this is: go ahead, let anybody talk online first. People get upset by themselves. People, with all due respect, not you, mind you, but people will sit sometimes online by themselves. They do not have contact with other people. They do not. And when you talk about Israel and Palestine on both sides, you will hear somebody says, Israel has no right to exist. Palestinians do not have the right to exist. And then it just 
devolves into. And that's why it's like, forget it. <laughs> Thank you, social media. It's not social media's fault, but it's like doing this. It's like, can we talk about something? Yes. Okay. Meet me at this place. We're going to discuss this. Great. Now, before we begin, I want you to drink a lot. Okay. Y'all pretty soused? Okay, good. And then I'm going to push one person into another and they say, okay, now start talking about it. That's what social media is. People start yelling at each other, screaming. And the more you let, and Lex Friedman, by the way, uh, who is very good, puts these people, Benny Morris and Destiny against, and he, I can't remember his name. He's very good. But, but Finkelstein, who talks like this, up against the fastest talker. He's like that FedEx guy. Remember that? Uh, the, remember Life is a Rock? I was mentioning this reference. Uh, Destiny, he speaks, nobody knows what he's saying, but he speaks so fast. And then you have the slowest talker in the world in Norman Finkelstein. I couldn't, I couldn't take it. <laughs> I just say, I'm sorry. I, I just, this is, this is, what is this? People are dying and we're, and this is talking about 1948, 73, the Nagma, the yes, but what about it? Thank you, social media. Thank you. This is the most ridiculous thing. Let me explain something to you. Let me give you this analogy. We're standing at the emergency room. There's somebody coming in. They're having a heart attack. You and I are cardiac. We're, we're emergency room physicians. We got to go in there. This guy's having a heart attack. He's got a massive MI. We've got to stop this. We've got to stop clouding. We've got to do everything. We've got to get him right away. And you want to discuss about what well, was probably his lifestyle. I'm looking at him by the size of his weight, probably. You know, I bet you he has a family history. This. Excuse me. This patient's dying. What are we doing? That's social media. That's news. Talking nonsense. Yeah, but you understand that it was Begin. Actually, the Zionist, the Herzl was the one. Even Ben Gurion said, what are we doing? That's great for later on. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm fascinated by this. Stop this. Stop this. Did you see the dropping of the flower? And they want to build a pier? What is going on here? And America's like this, huh? Americans like this. They got their lapel pin. Got my, got my, got my Israel pin. Got my American flag pin. Got my uh, Ukrainian pin. Huh? I was at an event. I said, Republicans, big shots. How many of you know who uh, Victoria Newland is? Nobody. I swear to God, nobody. What am I doing here? She's probably more important than anybody, and nobody knows her name. Sparky says, history began on October, the, on October the 7th, 2023. Genocide is equivalent to drag queen story hour, and Lionel's implied advice to George Galloway is to employ mealy mouth duplicity. No, no, not at all. Not at all. But here's the story. If nobody's going to be listening to you here, you're not doing very well. If that's the way it is, if that's, there are some people, and let me tell you something right now, this is very important. There are some people who are very good at say, at, at explaining the case, but their personalities here, no, nobody's going to listen to them. Do you know years ago, there were people who were really, really important. Speaking of various, uh, take the civil rights movement. Rap Brown, Stokely Carmichael. What they were saying was absolutely correct. They scared people. They turned people off. Martin Luther King changed it. Malcolm X later on changed it. See, people love this thing, mealy mouth. They, they consider that as whatever. If nobody is listening, see, let me explain something to you. If ever, and I speak of nobody in particular, but if ever you come across as a nut, remember that. And you may not like to hear this. If you come across as a nut, nobody cares. It's what I said the other day. Oh, no, I never said mealy mouth. No, I never did. There are sometimes there are people here in this country who get vacated. Turn off. Sorry. No. 
It's one thing for you to say, we have to stop this now. But when you start turning on a country and you sound like you are seething, seething about Israel, about a country, nobody's going to listen to you. They turn off. Nobody's listening to you. When it, when Jane Fonda was trying to stop the war and they were saying, you know, we got to go. And then obviously she turns around this country. That's great. She might be correct. You just lost the audience. So if you think that's good, that's fine. And if you think that particular talk is going to help end this in this country, we've got the money. We can turn off like that. We can stop it like that. But if you think having somebody yell and scream about death to Israel, if you think that's going to work and you think, no, that's bold, you're out of your mind. It's not incorrect. You're not going to get anything done, though. You're not going to get anything done in this country. And you know it and I know it. But see, there are some people who say, damn it, I'm right. And if I'm right, you're going to come around to me. Fannie Willis does that. Fannie Willis says, I'm right. I don't care how I come across. Try going across. And let me tell you something. One of the biggest problems we have in this country is going on right now is this word genocide. If you don't understand that, and you can say, but it is. I understand it. It is. I understand it. I understand it. We had a statute years ago called mayhem for aggravated battery. Didn't work, but that's what they called it. Because in this country, when you say that, people have this idea about genocide. But it's a, but you tell them, no, it's Article 2. This is the convention. Read the definition. They're not going to read the definition. When you throw in apartheid, you throw that in, you just turn people off. Because, But it is apartheid. Maybe you just lost them. How do you think you're going to win something? By being right or by convincing people? You're probably right, though. You're saying, no, I don't care whether I convince anybody. I just want to be right. That's all I want to do. I want to be right. Nobody will agree with me. Nobody will change their way. Nothing will stop. The killing won't stop. But damn it, I'm right. Right? Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. There were people during Vietnam who, who did not, wouldn't even countenance the idea of leaving Vietnam because they're from a World War II era. That would be cutting and running. America doesn't lose wars. You had to get around that. But damn it, I'm right. Okay. Thank God people didn't say, you know what, the hell with you. I'm going to say what's right. And whether you do or whether you don't come around to my way of thinking, screw you. This is the way they say it on BBC. This is the way they say it. This is, and by the way, God, there are a lot of people, wonderful people. And I'll tell you who does a very good job. Uh, um, uh, Max Blumenthal, but Max Blumenthal, there's a lot of places he ain't going to play. He ain't going to play. And here's the thing. If I'm only, and he, he's very good though, very good. Aaron Mate, very good. Judge Napolitano, Mearsheimer, um, excellent, excellent. And Mearsheimer might be the best of the best because he tones it down. He speaks the best and he speaks scholarly and he doesn't insult people. He doesn't scare people. He doesn't scare people. But you're probably right because you just want to say, we don't want to be mealy mouthed about this. No, no, no. Because people will come around to us because eventually our intellect and our force will be so great and so masterful that the fact that we're scaring people will be of no consequence. No, Mearsheimer's approach is the best. Listen to him. He doesn't scare people. What he says is more powerful than sloganeering or pamphleteering. He doesn't talk about the death. Of it. No, 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 no. But then again, that's not fun. I realize that. See, I'm of the persuasion, maybe it's a lawyer in me. I want to win. I want to win. I don't really want to convince you unless convincing you, unless you're the person in charge of the money. That makes, but other than that, I want to win. That's realism. All right, friends. Have a great and a glorious day. Thank you so, so, so very much. Um, uh, Salenti and Napolitano. Terrific. By the way, Salenti is one of the funniest. Salenti's 
line that I love was one of the best was the chance. How do I say this? The uh, oh, what would be the chances of us invading Iraq if their main export was broccoli? Think about that one. Think about that one. Sparky says, what did they call apartheid in South Africa for so many decades? Let's see. What was it? Oh, yeah, apartheid. Well, that's terrific. You see, Sparky, but we know that. And apartheid hits people the wrong way. Let me ask you something. You want to use the word holocaust? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, this is a holocaust. Technically speaking, right? Go ahead. I mean, that's what they called it, right? Go ahead. Terrific. You'll do that. Use ethnic cleansing. And go on and see how many people say, wow, I didn't know that. Well, that hey, I'm in. Go ahead and use that. Use things like genocide. Use like, um, oh, uh, I mean, don't ever think about selling something here. Just think about being right. They called it apartheid then. You got it? Mandela. You got it? Let me tell you something. This was the most incredible thing ever. You're going to love this. I'm glad we're talking about this. There is now a famous, famous uh, thing. It was Nelson Mandela who was talking to Ted Koppel. I think he was in, I think he was in New York. I don't know how many years ago. And he gave one of the most fat, and I understood exactly what he was saying. And Ted Koppel was basically uh, pro-Palestinian, pro, I think, uh, pro-Cuba, um, Fidel Castro, somebody else. Everybody that you could line up. Oh, Arafat. Arafat. What am I saying? Arafat and, and Castro. Okay? Now, hear me out. And you would have loved this, and you would have said, oh, this is terrific. This is, this is, this is perfect. Oh, look at this. Sparky says, it's urgent. And you haven't listened to a word I've said. That's what I'm saying. I want to stop killing, and you want to be correct. You want to be bold. You want to be strong. You don't care about the killing. You don't care whether anybody stops. You just want to be right and put this guy on who's not mealy mouth. But let me explain to you. So here comes uh, Nelson Mandela. And Nelson Mandela was absolutely correct. The whole idea, the whole story about Arafat has been so... Remember the, remember, remember this, the story about Hamas, where Hamas uh, was basically a creation of Israel? You've heard this before. I understand it. I understand that. I know you do. Good. Now, when Nelson Mandela came out and said, yes, I'm for Yasser Arafat. They're thinking Yasser Arafat, 1972, Black September, uh, the, the Olympics, Yasser Arafat, bombings, Yasser Arafat. Remember Carlos the Jackal, terrorism. Ter it was Yasser Arafat with that Ringo star with the glasses and the gun and the whole bit. Yasser Arafat, this is Mandela's hero? That's where they played it here. Fidel Castro? Fidel Castro? And, and Mandela said, basically, vis-a-vis -vis his point of view, these people have actually done nothing to us. Blah, 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 blah. Now, if I was a CIA, FBI, whatever it is, I'd say, make me a million copies of this and just and do not change one word of this. And go to the people of the United States and say, you want to know about Mandela? There he is. Mandela's against apartheid. He's also for... Arafat and Castro. You do the math. And that's all it will be. Even though I know the truth and you know the truth, they would say, Arafat. Arafat. You 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 like Arafat? Yeah, but let me explain to you what wait, 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 you you what? Oh, I didn't know. Okay, now 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 I know who you're about. See, that's the part that gets me. Look at this. Uh I don't fully understand the topic. Me, I still listen. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I want this to stop right now.
Let me just leave you with this. I want this to stop now. Stop now. Stop now. I want to stop now. Sparky says, was Reagan's call to Begin before or after a U.S. Marine officer held a gun to an Israeli tank commander's head in Lebanon? Okay. Fascinating. Sparky, again, you have this idea, and I love you, my friend, and I love you to death, but you love to pick fights with people who isn't who aren't against you. You love it. There's something about you that says, I like to fight more than the cause. I just love fighting. I like this guy. It's you know you, it's like saying Jane Fonda's right. Jane Fonda was the worst thing that ever happened. Jane Fonda was, in my opinion, well, I wouldn't be surprised if the CIA created her. Nothing prolonged <clears throat> the war more than Jane Fonda climbing on top of a of a anti-aircraft battalion and saying end the war. Jane Fonda did more to perpetuate the war. But she was right. But she was right. No. Because if you don't convince people, no. Anyway, dear friends, you have a great and a glorious day. Thank you so much. Fred Pound says, I stole that joke from Brian Regan. Love the show. <laughs> Thank you. Brian Regan, by the way, is excellent. One of the funniest people around and nice and clean. So Fred Pound, thank you. Sparky, as always, dear friend, you are most piquant. I like pink it better, but thank you. You are so terrific. I thank you for this. So what? Uh, thank you, by the way. Uh, Edie Crowley, thank you. And uh, let me see. Yes, and thank you. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate all of that and all of you. Most, most, most. Oh, Sparky says, not just mealy mouth, mealy mouth duplicity. Okay, I don't know what that means, but thank you. I appreciate that. Now, here's the story. You have a wonderful day. We'll be back to 7 p.m. Good news. The evening show is on. Thank God. Back to reality. We will continue. Remember, I want to introduce you to Tiffany Henyard. You are going to thank me for that. That's an acquired taste. That is an acquired taste like you cannot believe. Okay? And I want to thank you. Thank you all so very much. And please, I appreciate the fact. I love the fact that we have exciting, interesting, fascinating, forceful, uh, proud. The only thing that I ask, and nobody's violent, is we just don't want to get mean or nasty or hateful or whatever it is. But as far as the subject matter goes, I love it. Absolutely love it. That's all. That's all. In fact, by the way, one day I'll tell you exactly the PR move I would do. Let me leave you one thing. There was a guy named Bernie Schwartz. You know who Bernie Schwartz was? No. Bernie Schwartz was the guy who came up with the Daisy commercial. Daisy Chain did uh, LBJ. And he, uh, it ran one time, and it basically was the most effective campaign. It was when it was against LBJ against uh, Goldwater. And there was this kid saying, 10, 9, 8, and then he says, we must live in a world where we, we basically they want to scare the people about about Afghan about the Goldwater. That's all. And it ran one time, and it was the most effective one. And if anybody ever showed me, let's said you can do whatever ad you want, and we'll and we'll put it on. I would say fine. Show people what war looks like. That's all. Don't have any. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't call anything. Say, this is what's happening. That's it. And let people see it. Do not let people in any way, in any way, be dissuaded, distracted by a character, a personality, or somebody who, and frankly, some people who enjoy their own particular um, fame more than the cause. And they're all over the place. But you show people. Show people what war is. This is it. This is what war is. This is what war is. I was watching a show the other night about serial killers. And I wish somebody would say, let me show you what a murder scene looks like. And you're going to find out later on all this talk about serial killers. There's, you, you think Ted Bundy was interesting? This is what Ted Bundy did. And just don't, just, just show it. Just no words. Maybe the date. You know, 
maybe one of us, is show people. And show exactly what it is when you pull people out of rubble. Show people what this looks like. Show what it looks like. Don't, 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 nothing wrapped. No, no, no. Don't sanitize it. No, don't, don't have the shrouds. No, show it. If, if you're going to pay for it, if you're paying for this, show it. And that's it. I won't have to say anything. You don't have to point to anything. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to say, and this is what this means. Let people's jaws drop. And do not distract them. Let them see the horror of war. Let them see what war is. Let them see what destruction is. Let them see what the termination of life is. Human life, innocent life. People that look just like you and me. People who look just, you know, because they have arms and legs. That's what I want. But you're not going to see that. No, you're going to have people talking. You're going to have somebody, you're going to have uh, Finkelstein and Destiny clarify it. See? And with all due respect, that's great. But that just that just obfuscates. That just delays. Just show them. What do you got to worry about, right? Show them. I can end war like that. Show them. All right, dear friends. Have a great and glorious day. You were fantastic. See you tonight at 7 p.m. And don't forget, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure and make sure you subscribe to Mrs. L at Lynn's Warriors because what's going on? There is a battle for our children. Lynn's Warriors. Don't get me started with that group of people who are distorting and destroying the action. Anyway, thank you. Have a great and glorious day. Lynn's Warriors. Follow her on YouTube. See you tonight. Don't forget the monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue you. Dead, dead.